Welcome to the Power Muscle Program video training series. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of our mobile scorecard app for recording field data. I've already introduced you to the scorecard app in a previous video. Uh, I'm now going to go through the process of completing and submitting both a habitat scorecard and a whole farm scorecard. Both scorecards have been assigned to me and therefore I will populate and submit them from my inbox. The data I'm going to submit is fictitious and is based on two dummy scorecards that I've marked up. This one here is showing a grassland scorecard. The farmer ID there is 950 and the plot number is 07. And the various red points indicate the data that's been populated. This is the whole farm scorecard I'm going to be populating. Again, it's for the same farmer, 950 and the various uh, data that I'm going to be inputting is listed there on the, um, on the various attributes within the scorecard. So now I'm just going to open survey one, two, three. So these first few steps we've already covered in the previous video. Firstly, I'm going to log into my device. So you should all be familiar with this interface now. Once I log in on the, on the survey one two three app this is the, the um, screen that I see I've got my two surveys PMP habitat scorecard and PMP whole farm scorecard so you can see that there's not no notifications down here at the bottom of the screen sometimes you might have an updates notification if you do you'd press that to update the surveys but at the moment there isn't a need to so I've obviously updated these relatively recently so we'll start off by populating a habitat scorecard to do that we click here on the habitat scorecard and then you've got the two options that we went through before you've got collect which is if you were to collect information for a new plot or a plot that you identify in the field or secondly inbox where there's existing scorecards already assigned to you as i said i'm going to be using the inbox because we've got uh, i've already assigned this this fictitious scorecard to myself and it's just important every time to refresh this it's probably best to do this in the morning before you go on the field when you're in good mobile coverage or, or got Wi-Fi app. So there we can see that this is the only scorecard in my inbox at the moment, 95007, that means it's farmer 950, plot number seven. So that's the same, that corresponds with the scorecards I showed you a minute ago. So I click on that. Just takes a second to load up. Right. So this is the, as we go down to populate the individual scorecard, we can see that some of the fields are already populated, private, I have no option to change that, it's private land. The three digit numeric code, this is the farmer ID, so it's 950, that's already pre-populated. And the farmer's name, this is there as a check for you to make it, you know, if you're out in the farm, you're gonna know that this is John Smith's farm, therefore, yeah, I've opened the right scorecard. It's just a fail safe really more than anything else. Uh, PMP plot number is 07, that's correct. And then the next thing here is previous year result. So these uh, fields in the score in the app that have this kind of gray font, they're always uh, information fields or, or uh, training fields as such, a background information. So here it tells me what previous year result was. So last year this was scored as a grassland, the habitat type was a grassland. The total plot score was only 41, so it would have got a score of four out of 10. And that was made up of 30 for section A, ecological integrity, 11 for section B, hydro hydrology, and uh, zero for section C, where it's threats to the site. So that's, um, that's just there for your information purposes only, but certainly it'll just prompt you to say, okay, how did this, uh, this plot score last year? So then the surveyor, that's myself, that's already pre-populated. Some of you will have the option of selecting your name here. So if you're working as part of a team, which I am, I'm part of muscle team. So Patrick Russell, I click on that. And then we got plot location. So this shows the location of the plot. There's no way of changing it. You don't need to change it. The next one is the surveyor location. Now this is the location that you're currently at. If we click on this, it'll be the current location of the plot or of the, of the surveyor. If I click in there, I can see within the map, I can see exactly where I am. I can change it to maybe aerial photography if you want to see the, the layout of the farm. And then now the plot I'm going to look at is actually down here. So 
because I'm not actually standing out in the middle of the field at the moment, I'm sitting in my office, I'm just going to move this, the, the marker over here. And once it's situated in the correct place for the plot, you can press the submit button down here at the bottom right. So that just submits your, your current location or your, the location when you were out surveying the farm. So I, I populated these cards when I was out earlier. So that's why I'm just selecting the location right now. So that's, that's that part of it done. Then we're down to choosing the scorecard. So this is very important that you choose the right scorecard for the plot. Obviously I'm in the grassland, so I'm clicking grassland. All of the questions that follow are obviously from the grassland scorecard. So photo of the plot, we just encourage you to submit a photo. It's not obligatory, you can choose to or not to, but certainly we'd, we'd like you to submit a, a, a photograph from each of the plots you're completing a scorecard for. Now you have an option of taking a photo with the camera, or you can select one from your, from your files if you took the photograph earlier. So I took the photograph earlier, so I just click in here. And navigate to where the scorecard is, the scorecard photo is. It's just over here. This is it, Grassland 07. So now that's that's uh, attached to my scorecard to submit. Okay, this is the date and time. This is correct. This is just right now. I'm, I'm submitting the, the scorecard, so I don't need to change that. Dominant grassland type, so it's a wet grassland, so I click there. And then Soil type, peat soil. So these uh, are single multiple choice. So you can't click the two. There's no option of doing that. So you just click whichever one it is. Is the plot trafficable by machinery? No. And then ecological integrity. So this is where you, you uh, click the, the species that are present. So birds foot trefoil, I have that. And then if you're thinking, well, well what's that look like again? I just want to double check that I've got the right species here. There's an option that's clicking on the photograph and yep, yeah, that's it. That's exactly what I meant to click. So that's correct. It's just a, a help guide again. You can see the species there. So birds foot trefoil is present. We've also got ladies mantle, number seven. We've got number eight, ladies smock. Again, you can click the photograph. Yes, correct, that's it. Go back out of it. We're just checking to see what it is. Lesser spearwort, we have that. We have marsh pennywort, we have meadow sweet. So a lot of these are the wetland species. You can see that from the little asterisks here. It's the meadow sweet. And then we've got ragged robin. We've got sphagnum mosses are present. And then I think this yellow flower is tormentil. So just to click into it, yep, yeah, that's it, tormentil. I click that. And then we've got the last species you've got is yellow flag iris. So once you've clicked the various species, it'll automatically populate what they are. You can't change this, but it just adds them up and it does it all automatically for you. So the score for, for number of positive indicators, we have 10 species. So that's medium to high here between nine and 12, and it just applies a score of eight. So that score of eight is automatically applied by the app after you tick the photos. Now we're on to the section question on the scorecard. What's the combined cover of positive indicators? So here we're clicking that it's frequent. It's 10. Next question is negative indicators. Are there any? There are. There's perennial ryegrass, and we've also got nettles. Again, it counts them down here. And then you've got what's the combined cover of negative indicators? So from walking across the site, you'll have a good enough idea as to what category this is fitting into. Here we've got occasional, it's between six and 10% of the plot is covered by, by rye, grass and nettles. Then we've got four is, uh, what is the vegetation structure in grasslands that are primarily grazed? So you have three options. Again, there's help here if you're wondering, what does this mean again? Good, poor structure, moderate structure, good structure. I think what we're standing in is similar to this. So we'll say good structure. So good structure. Again, that help is there for, for you just to be able to refer to if you're having trouble remembering what to how, what matches the criteria. We minimize it again. So that's that's it. That's section A of our scorecard, ecological integrity. You can see that the plot has scored 30 out of 50. Again, this is all auto-generated once you've clicked the answers above. It generates the total, the total for that section of the scorecard. Next we're on to section B. Section B, you remember, is hydrological integrity. 
Now here we're on a, a wet plot, but there's no natural water courses adjoining or within the plot. So this is where we end up as natural wet feature zones are present. Then we got section B, wetness as indicated by total cover of wetland indicators. So you remember the wetland indicators above that were indicated by the, um, by the asterisks. So this is looking for the total cover of all those species. So it's obviously going to be less than what we had above or the same. Um, and this is B2. So what we have here is frequent. Wetland indicators are frequent across the site. And of course, this includes rushes and purple moor grass, which aren't necessarily on the, on the positive indicators. Next is artificial drainage features within the plot. But the plot has been past, there's been past drainage, there's no recent drainage or there's no extensive drainage, so that's what it scores there. Again, there's help in assessing drainage, it gives you an idea as to what fits into which category. So that's past drainage, so total points for section B is 11 out of 30. So now that's all again, it's auto calculated. Now we're on to section C of the scorecard, the final section. What is the cover of bracken? This is low on our plot. What is the cover of rhododendron? Oh, sorry, this, uh, um, what is the, I skipped a question. What is the cover of encroaching immature scrub? It's low, it's there. If there were scrub species present, you'd type them in here. So then what's the cover of bracken? We already populated that, it's low. And then what's the cover of rhododendron? Again, there's help in determining what is what's slight, moderate or severe. This one here, we feel that rhododendrons occurring in the plot, it's slight, it's not very abundant, but it's certainly present. Then what, to what extent is the ground poached? Low, it's a tiny bit of poaching. And then the last and final question, is there any evidence of any damaging activities to vegetation or soil? The answer is no, but just for demonstration purposes, if it was yes, it would open up this window here and you'd have to say what the cover is of the, of the uh, damaging activities. You have to type in what the damaging activity is. However, the answer that we've got here in our scorecard is no, there's no other damaging activities. So the total points for section C is five out of 20. So then you're on to the next section of the scorecard, plot score and management advice. The total score is 46 out of 100. That's based on all the questions we've answered above. Again, auto-populated. And here, the final plot score, it just rounds the 46 up to 5 out of 10. Now, just to give you an indication as to what is, uh, how, how this is all done, if we go back up and say, actually, no, I made a mistake, that doesn't make sense. If I go back up here and say, okay, rhododendron actually wasn't present in the site. We go absent here. If you make a mistake, and just go back up and change it, and it'll automatically update the total plot scores down here, 56, 6 out of 10. So actually it is present, so we just go back and put it back in the slide. So we're back to five out, of, five out of 10 or 46 out of 100. So then management advice, we have, it's necessary to give some management advice. If you feel there's nothing at all, no management advice to give, it's, click this. This, isn't, uh, this is all voluntary management advice, it's just a, a recommendation for the farmer. It's a very high gra scoring grassland. We'd say continue current management of this high quality grassland. In this case though, we feel there is something the farmer can do to improve the score. And based on what we presented above, I think the key thing here is maybe control invasive species. If he, if he controls the spread of rhododendron or removes it from the plot, he could suddenly get an increased payment up to 56 or he could get a six out of 10 instead of a five out of 10. So that's the management advice we're giving. And that uh, finalizes the scorecard. If at any stage during the recording, you see, oh, I've made a mistake or I want to come back to this later, you can just X this. You can close the survey and lose changes, which means it discards anything we did. You can continue with the survey. That means we uh, just go back to the survey card and it's unchanged. Or else you could save it in your drafts and there's a drafts folder next to the inbox and if you save anything to drafts if you have completed it and you want to come back to it you can save it there and come back to it at a later stage however i'm happy enough with what i um what i did so i'll just continue with survey i think i've populated everything you click this so there i uh, if i hadn't populated the required field it would it would give me an error but i have so i can just send now 
So what I'll do is I'll submit it. The other option is to save it to the outbox, but what we're going to do here is just submit it and send it now. I've got mobile coverage, so I can just send it to the office. You might decide to save it to the outbox if you're in a remote location, you don't have data, or you want to look over it before you send it on to us later. We'll just send now. So that's it. It's uploading the attachment, sending the data, and that's it. So now I'm finished with a recording scorecard. I can look in the sent folder that shows up the scorecard that I just submitted. Okay, if I want to edit and resend it, if I feel I made a mistake, I can do that. Now just to note that you're, you're actually editing the scorecard after you sent it to us, which is okay, but this option won't be available to you after the deadline for the scorecard submission has been made. So we can go in there and you can edit or make a change to it. Um, I think a better workflow maybe is just to save it to the outbox until such time that you're happy to send it and then submit it and then don't bother with the sent items. But I've no change to make to it, so I just click OK and I send it again. So that's it. I think the sent items really is of, of value to kind of for you to see what you've done and what you've uh, that's the scorecard I submitted there on the map. Um, I think it's really of value to you to keep an eye, a track of what you've done and what you haven't done. So that's it.